In this video presentation, we will discuss in detail on, prevention and control measures to be followed against rabies in humans and animals. Before that, we will have a brief overview about this infection. Rabies. The disease is caused by the genus Lysa virus. Based on tissue tropism, this virus is having target towards the neuronal tissues, so they are termed as neurotropic virus. This virus causes fatal encephalitis in humans and in many mammals. Host range. This neurotropic virus causes infection in dogs, cats, wild cats, jackal, wolf, bat and humans. This infection can be transmitted from animals to human, so they are considered a zoonotic infection. Source of infection. Infected animal, that is, rabbit animal, act as the principal source of this virus. Transmission is through, saliva, brain materials, bites of rabbit animal, and licks of rabbit animal, through an open wound, through mouth, eyes, and through mucous membranes of nose. Pathogenesis. The virus, first enters the tissue, from saliva of biting animal. Then, the virus do its initial replication, in the muscle tissue near the bite. Following replication, the virus binds to the acetylcholine receptors in the nearby nerves, with the help of surface glycoprotein G spikes, which we have discussed earlier. Then, the virus moves up through, peripheral nervous system to, central nervous system. Once the virus enters the central nervous system, it ascends through spinal cord, to reach the brain, where it causes fatal encephalitis. After its replication in the brain, the virus moves to salivary gland, and excreted through the saliva. Incubation period. The incubation is about 14 to 90 days, or more. The period varies. It depends upon, number 1. Sight of rabbit dog bite. Whether the bite is near to head, or far from head. Whether the bite is at extremities, like fingers, where the nerve endings are abundant. Number 2. Number of bites. Whether it is single, or multiple rabbit dog bites. Number 3. The amount of virus inoculated during bite. More the viral load, shorter the incubation period. Prevention and control. Two different regimens are followed. One is for pre-exposure prophylaxis, that is, before dog bite or before exposure to the virus. And another is for post-exposure prophylaxis, that is, after dog bite or after exposure to the virus. For pre-exposure prophylaxis in humans, the vaccination using anti-rabies vaccine ARV is followed. This measure is important for veterinarians, animal handlers, lab workers employed in the rabies laboratories, and traveler or geographic explorers traveling to the forest, caves and rabies endemic areas. For this, ARV is given at the dose of 1 ml intramuscularly into the deltoid muscle, or 0.1 ml intradermal injection is given. Intradermal injection is more economic and antigen-saving alternative to intramuscular administration, as it requires 0.1 ml of vaccine per intradermal injection dose, in contrast to 1 ml per intramuscular dose. ARV administration schedule is followed on 0 day, 7th day, 21st day or 28th day. Revaccination is followed every 3 to 5 years, that depends upon the neutralizing antibody level. Antibody levels can be evaluated by rapid fluorescent focus inhibition test RFFIT, which was discussed in previous video, under laboratory diagnosis. For pre-exposure prophylaxis in animals like dog and cat, anti-rabies vaccination is done, as per WSAV a guideline. That is a global guideline, given by, World Small Animal Veterinary Association. As per its vaccination schedule, the primary vaccination in dogs and cats against rabies is done at third month of age that is 12th week, with a dose of 1 ml per animal, intramuscular. Followed by 2 to 4 weeks apart, next vaccination is done at the age of 4th month, that is 15th week. In order to maintain the protective immunity against rabies, revaccination is done, every year, that is annually. In India, where rabies is endemic, four types of rabies vaccines are available. The first three are the cell culture derived. Number 1, human diploid cell culture vaccine. Number 2, purified chick embryo cell vaccine. Third, purified varicell rabies vaccine. And the fourth is the purified duck embryo vaccine. In this vaccines, first the virus is cultivated in the human diploid cells, or in chicken embryo fibroblast cells, or in varicell cells, or in embryonated duck egg. Followed by virus cultivation, inactivation of virus is done by using, beta propriolactone. These are the rabies vaccine strains. PV-11 strain. Pittman Moore strain, Flurry strain, Wistar strain, and CVS strain. Molecular studies have shown that, 
These strains are genetically homologous. Oral vaccination against rabies. This is done to prevent and eradicate rabies in wild animals, such as foxes, raccoons, coyotes, and jackals. Here, the vaccine is mixed with the edible food and used as bait vaccine. This bait vaccines are distributed by airplanes in wild and rural areas. The left picture, showing the paraffin-coated edible food bait vaccine. The right one, showing the dog, consuming the bait vaccine. For post-exposure prophylaxis, that is after suspected rabid dog bite, following PEP measure are followed. Number 1. Wound management. Number 2. Vaccination. And number 3. Rabies immunoglobulin, that is rig infiltration. We will discuss in detail about each measures here. Following wound management measures is to be followed immediately. Washing the wound with soap and water. Then, disinfecting the wound with disinfectants like alcohol, povidone iodine and dedil. The wound should be kept open, for exposure to sunlight. Suturing of wound should not be done. And the local irritants should not be applied over the wound. TT injection and antibiotic also administered to combat secondary bacterial infection. These are the basic and foremost important regimen to be followed after dog bite. Next, vaccination, that is active immunization. Here, anti-rabies vaccine is given at the dose of 1 ml intramuscular, or 0.1 ml intradermal injection. The vaccination is followed on 0 day, 3rd day, 7th day, 14th day and 28th day. The 90th day vaccination is optional. Once an individual is immunized with rabies vaccine that does not mean he is protected against rabies lifelong. Third, rig infiltration. Rabies immunoglobulin infiltration. Also called as anti-rabies serum. This is recommended even a micro droplet of blood is noticed. Here the infiltration of rabies immunoglobulin is done, into and around the wound, on zero day or, within seven day post bite. Once infiltrated, the rabies immunoglobulin will bind to the virus, and neutralize it at the site of bite. Rig preparations like equine rabies immunoglobulin ERIG and, human rabies immunoglobulin HRIG are available. ERIG at the dose rate of 40 international unit per kg body weight, and HRIG at the dose rate of 20 international unit per kg body weight is infiltrated around the wound, on zero day, or within seven day post bite. Following are the summary about the PEP regimen to be followed. Wound management. Immediate and thorough wound washing, with soap and water and disinfections. TT and antibiotic administration. Anti-rabies vaccination on 0, 3, 7, 14 and 28th day with 90th day optional. And rig infiltration around the wound. The contact with suspect rabbit animal is classified into three category. Category 1. Licks on intact skin. Category 2. Nibbling of uncovered skin, minor scratches or abrasions without bleeding. And Category 3. Nibbling of uncovered skin, minor scratches or abrasions without bleeding. Single or multiple transdermal bites or scratches, licks on broken skin, contamination of mucous membrane with saliva from licks, contacts with bats. Here are the categories of contact and their recommended post-exposure prophylaxis measures to be followed as given. For Category 1 contact. Washing is mandatory. For Category 2, washing plus vaccination is must. And for Category 3 contact, washing, vaccination and rig infiltration is followed. September 28th. World Rabies Day. This day is celebrated for Dr. Louis Pasteur's vision of rabies-free world. Rabies Day is a cooperative global event planned to reduce the suffering from rabies worldwide. Hope the lecture is informative and useful. Thank you.